The armed forces counterattacked near Chesov Yar in the Donetsk region and drove out the armed forces of the Russian Federation from the Canal District. This was announced by build analyst Julian Ropk. According to him, Ukrainian soldiers conducted a successful operation and knocked out the occupants from the residential quarter. The battle for Chesov Yar has been going on for several months. The city stands on the hills, which is why it is separated from the Russian forces by the Seversky Donets, Donbass water channel. To the east, behind the canal, there is a residential microdistrict, canal, with apartment buildings. Earlier, the armed forces of the Russian Federation tried to bypass it from the flanks and attack directly. For some time, they managed to occupy the destroyed buildings. But now the armed forces counterattacked and drove the Russians out of there. Ukrainian army lost or never lost several streets in the Canal Microdistrict in Chesov Yar, reports Ryopk. According to him, the Russian troops are also unsuccessfully attacking the village of Kalinovka to the north of Canal. Earlier, they captured it and approached the Seversky Donets Donbass channel, but then they were thrown back. Earlier, military officer of the armed forces of Ukraine, political scientist Kirill Sazanov said that the Russian invaders are attacking Chesov Yar from a new direction, namely from Gorlovka to Shumy, New York. For the last week, the enemy's assaults have been taking place constantly, you can see this from the official reports. There is not a single minute now that there is no assault anywhere, so that there is some kind of pause. They put their heads in their shoulders a little when ours deliver blows from the towns and rears. Then everything freezes, and then the storm continues, the warrior noted. Putin does not trust the FSB. War in Ukraine destroyed illusion of security in Russia. The full-scale war in Ukraine shattered the illusion of security in Russia. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's thirst for totalitarian control distracted the Russian Federal Security Service from its anti-terrorism duties and reduced its effectiveness as a security agency. This is stated in the material of the Telegraph. When Russian troops entered Ukraine in February 2022, the FSB began running filtration camps to test the loyalty of Ukrainians in the occupied territories. After humiliating Russian defeats in Kharkov and Kherson at the end of 2022, Putin ordered the FSB to intensify repression of foreign intelligence services and traitors. The article notes, in the Russian Federation, some activists condemned the reorientation of the FSB. After the attack on the Crocus City Concert Hall near Moscow, Russian journalist Kirill Martinov sharply criticized the FSB for focusing on LGBT extremists and rejecting warnings from Western intelligence agencies that an attack was imminent. Russian opposition activist Ivan Zdanov said the FSB's obsession with spying on Russians and punishing anti-war dissidents had destroyed its effectiveness. Russian state media naturally turned away from this criticism, redirecting public anger towards Ukraine. This allowed the FSB leadership to weather the storm of its repeated intelligence failures and remain unchanged. The FSB's denial of responsibility coincided with escalating complaints in Russia's unprivileged regions where ethnic minorities live. Dagestan is one of the biggest victims of the unequal burden of the Ukrainian war, the material notes. At the beginning of May 2022, Dagestan had the highest level of losses among all regions of Russia. Independent investigations showed that at least 130 Dagestanis died. By April 2023, this figure had risen to at least 806, and the families of liquidated Dagestani men were struggling to receive compensation from the Kremlin. The creation of the Caspian Volunteer Battalion in Dagestan, which mobilized men over 40, ensures that conscription rates are significantly higher than those in Moscow and St. Petersburg. The high rates of casualties and mobilization coincided with the worsening economic crisis in Dagestan. Due to the dominance of oligarchic clans, 70% of Dagestan's budget consists of Russian federal subsidies. This is the highest figure among Russian regions. While Dagestan authorities claim that fighting in Ukraine is good for the future of Russia, many desperate young people who do not agree with this 
the article emphasizes 